to dan grades in shimpan you'll move from being just a basic shimpan to a more, more experienced more experienced until you become a senior shimpan so sorry cats so i'm going to skip over a few bits and um just want to make a few general cons uh, comments. It's really tough being a shumpan. Don't underestimate it. They're very often criticized, but they're very, very, really praised. Shumpan should be invisible. So the focus must be on the competitors, on the Shi'ai shop. They should not get in the way of people watching. They should just disappear into the background. The Shi'ai Shai should always, you know what Shi'ai Shai is, is a competitor, should always feel that they have been judged fairly at the end of the Shi'ai. It is not a good thing for the competitors to go away grumbling that the Shumpan didn't see my kote or I had a good man and it wasn't scored. Your mind must be empty of judgments, preferences and other thoughts. So this is the most difficult thing because we're all human and we all have our preferences, we have our favorites, there's our mate fighting some stranger and you're shimpanning. It's just wrong to be making a preference for your, for your friend. You have to empty your mind and realize and always think there are two strangers there doing the Shi'ai and you must judge accordingly. And this is very important. You can't shimpan correctly if you do not practice your kendo regularly. And for high level shimpanning at proper competitions, you're not allowed to shimpan if you're over 70. Because they've decided that you're decrepit and your eyesight isn't so good. <laughs> Okay. You have to understand the rules and the regulations. This book here is your Bible. You should always have it, all have one, and you should study it. This is a difficult book to read. Mm -hmm. It's not been written that well because it's a translation from Japanese to English. It is both Japanese and English. The Japanese is the official text. And they're trying to link the subsidiary rules with the main articles. It's a bit messy, so I'm trying to kind of try and tidy that up. But you should all have your own book, and you should learn from it and study it, because it does dictate the rules of Kendo very clearly and very specifically. So, if the shimpan allow you to get away with poor technique, guess what? The poor technique propagates and your kendo never improves. And not too much, but the shimpan should always adjust the strictness of their decisions to the level of the competition. So it's a Q grade competition. You can't judge it on the same strict criteria as a 
then great competition. But it mustn't be too different. It can't be too lenient. But you must understand that a good, good strike from a Q grade is not the same as a good strike from a senior player. So, as I said, you should all have your copy of that book, the rules and the regulations. The last issue was put out in 2017. I believe there's a new issue out on the way, but I haven't heard anything yet. So, how are the articles structured in this book of regulations? There are 39 articles and they are grouped in seven main sections. The first section is the purpose of the regulation. The second section are the general rules. The third section are matters relating to Shi'i. The fourth section are prohibitions and penalties, which I'm not going to get too involved with at this stage. Section five is the composition of the Shimpan group, who are the Shimpan and section six is matters relating to how the shimpan operate and section seven are supplementary matters. So let's quickly look at those specific articles, all 39 of them. The first one is the purpose and fairness and it's probably the most important regulation because everything hinges on a purposeful shimpan and a fair shimpan. Fairness is the key word. Then, you have to be, you are responsible for ensuring that the Shi'i Joe layout is correct, that the Shunai being used are to specifications, that the Kendo armor is correct, um, that everything is properly tied, etc., etc., etc. You are responsible as Shimpan when you com competitors enter the Shi'i Joe. You've got to make sure that they're wearing the correct gear, everything is knotted correctly, tied correctly, that the, uh, the men emo are not, not too long, all those sorts of things. Your responsibility. Set three, all related to the Shia. So the Shia duration, how do you judge a victory, uh, team rules, how to stop and end the Shi'i, how to suspend the Shi'i, what do you do about injury and suspension, and Article 12, which is the second most important article in my mind, is how do you judge a correct uh, winning point. Yoku de Tots. Then where is the correct hitting part of the Shi'i? the Totsubu of the Shinai, and where are the correct targets that you can strike? The Totsubu of the Kendo. Then we come to all the prohibitions and the penalties related to the prohibitions, which is a quite a complex little uh, area and something that I don't think we need to worry about too much right now. I'll maybe deal with one of them. Then, what is the Shimpan group? It's the Shimpan Cho. It's the boss of the whole arena. It's the Shimpan Shunin, who's the boss of the, of the particular Shi'ai Jo. The Shimpan In are the three Shimpan in the Shi'ai Jo. Shushin, the Fukushin, the Kakarian is the court staff who are the scorers and the, the ribbon tires and the writer uppers and the timekeepers. And their regulations apply to all of them. Then, how do the Shimpan indicate their decisions? How do you show a uh, valid strike? How do you do revocations? How do you call for conferences? What are the Shimpan procedures? How do you deal with accidents? How do you deal with defaults? What is the scoring? How do you handle an offender and deal with their score? How do you do a conference, Gobi? How do you deal 
with a um, complaint from the manager, Iggy. How do you uh, how do you make your pronouncements? How do you deal with the Shimpan flags? And then finally, the other procedures that are not in the regulations, which the Shimpan may have to decide for a particular setup. So. You have to be aware of these specifications. And it's your responsibility as Shimpan Group if there's a competition to make sure that all these measurements are correct. So your Shi Joe's 9 to 11 meters in any combination, including the width of the line. White tape to demarcate the area, 5 to 10 centimeters wide. Your center of the competition area is marked by a cross in the geometric center. All those measurements you can see in the book. You have to be aware of them. You have to make sure before the competition starts that you are satisfied that it meets the regulations. So everything must tie in with the regulations. You have to make sure that they are using the correct shinais. They are shinai specifications for men, for women, for juniors, for NITO, they are all different lengths, different weights. You have to know these and make sure that the correct shinai's are being used. This in a competition will usually be done on a shinai check before the competition starts. And you have to know all these different names of your parts of your shinai, the Kensen, the Sakigawa, Nakigui, the Takei, the blade area, the Tsuru's, the string, the back of the blade, the Tsuda, Tsukugawa. You have to be aware of all of that and you must know the Datsubu striking area. It's one quarter of the total length. Anything in this area here is for a valid strike. Strikes in this area are not valid. It's not exactly specified in the regulations. The regulations basically say the best cutting area of the blade and that is what's defined as the best cutting area of the blade. Sorry, Centre? Yeah. Um, with regard to the, um, the, the, the shemite, does it have to be a bamboo composition? Because I've seen others with carbon fibre. It's bamboo or a composition or carbon fibre approved by the International Kemper Federation. Okay, but you advise not to use a, a uh, composition. It's okay to use, sometimes you'll find that seniors will use a composition shunai in practice so that, you know, beginners whacking the shunai don't break too many of their shunais. But you advise because uh, composition shunais have quite a dead feel, the bamboo shunais are much more alive. So focus on a bamboo shunai. Okay, there's the specifications for the shinai, I won't worry about that. Those are the uh, uniform specs, or what they look like. So, let's look at the matters relating to shiai. Standard time for a shiai is five minutes, but it can be changed according to the tournament director. It can be made three minutes, sometimes ten minutes, and then in the case of a draw at the end of five minutes, a tie, you then have either a designated tie or, so it's a draw and that's where it sits, which you can have in a team match, or you need a decision, you go into extra time. Your extra time is in show is three minutes, and you can have another three minutes and another three minutes and another three minutes, you can just allow it to run on, but you can, as as the shimpan, you can stop it after any three minute uh, set and say that's enough, we have to make a decision now because of time constraints and then you make a decision called a hantai or a chusen hantai, we'll talk about those later on. Um, usually it's a three point scoring system, so if at the end of the three minutes there were the five minutes, should I say that the uh, Shia show with two points, two scoring valid points is the winner. If at the end of the five minutes the score is 
the one person with the one point is the winner. If the score is 0-0 zero, zero or 1-1, one, one, that's when you're going to extra time or declare a tie at all. Uh, you can have a competition because of time constraints with a, uh, uh, an Ipon Shogu, a one-point score. So the first one to score a point is the winner, but that will be decided by the tournament director. Uh, the winning point in Encho is an Ipon Shogu, a one-point. The first point to score in Encho is the winner. Okay. Victory may be decided by 100. Ante is when the shimpan must individually decide who, even though no points have been scored, or it's a tie, and you've got to make a winner, they will decide who they thought scored nearly the best point, but not quite, or showed a better spirit, or had better posture, just looked the superior player, and then the uh, Shushin will at a point called Hantai and all three will immediately lift their flags to give their judgment of who they think the better player was and that's the winner. Choosing is by lot. Don't ask me. I haven't been able to find out. I've never seen it done. I've not heard of it being done. I don't know whether they pull a piece of paper out of their hat or whether they go to a conference, or whether they go to the Shibban uh, Shunan to discuss it. I'm trying to find out, but I don't know. But don't worry about it. I don't think it will ever happen in your lifetime. Dantai Shiai, that's the team Shiai. The victory is the team with the most wins. They have equal number of wins, then it's the most points scored. Otherwise, usually it's decided in a final fight with the representative each team and each team will choose their best fighter as they see and they will decide the match. The beginning and the end of a Shi'ai, now the Shimpan group we're coming to, the, the Shimpan group is the Shushin and the Fukushin. The Shushin is the main judge uh, and the Fukushin are the subsidiary judges, two of them. They all have equal weight in decision making the only thing is that the Shushin is the one who makes the pronunciations, the pronouncements, gives the orders, as it were. So, the beginning and the end of the Shia is proclaimed by the Shushin. Suspension of the Shia can be from any of the three judges. If you are Fukushin and you see something there, the Shina is broken or strings come loose, something, you can stop the Shi'ai. And if you put your hands up and say, yeah, mate, the main judge, the Shushin, will automatically do the same thing and immediately stop it. Okay. So, Article 12, I think, says nothing. Article 12, which I, to my mind is the most important. Article 12 in the book reads Article 12 Your coup de tots is defined as an accurate strike or thrust made on a datotsu bui on the opponent's kendo gu with the shunai's datotsu bu in high spirits and with correct posture being followed by zanshin short and sweet it doesn't begin to tell what you've got to look out for as a shimpan. So this I want to spend a bit of time on. So first of all, you must, as you progress in your kendo, you must understand more and more the rei or the theory or the rationale behind the techniques of kendo, the mental, the physical, and the sword techniques. There's always a logic and a reason behind all of those things. So, to judge a correct strike, we've got to look at the correct strike itself, and we have to look at what happens before and after the cut, Zenshin and Kamai. Kamai is before the cut, before the point scored, Zenshin is after the point is scored. We have to pay attention 
to all of those three items. We look at Zenshin and Kamai. Zenshin is very hard to translate. You can think of it as alertness after you've done the cut. So it's very important. So if you make an excellent meal, and then you go, and you all deflate, the shimpan might score the point and then take the point away. They're quite entitled to do that. So you have to show good spirit and good awareness and alertness after you've scored a point, prepared to score the next point. Your kamai, which is basically your stance or your posture, it relates to both your physical and your spiritual feeling. You can always see when somebody holds a great posture and they're just emanating a good, powerful spirit. So these are the two things you look out for and you want to make sure that the correct posture is being held. Body upright, the correct position of the feet, the correct position of the arms, the whole physical construct is correct. And you want to see that the competitor is exhibiting spirit. So that's the beginning, before and after the cut. If we look at the correct strike, what are the components? It has to be done from the correct distance. You have to see that they have taken an opportunity when it presented itself. That's all to do with timing. If someone just flails away with no opportunity, this is not correct. Your Thai Sabaki, your movement, your body and your feet, the whole way your body and your feet move and your Kikenta itch is vital for the correct point to be scored. The Tenuch, the way you're holding your Shunai and the way your grip completes the cut is also has to be observed. The strength of the strike, no use just tapping. You have to actually feel that it is a cut. And you have to have sign. Christmas is strike. You don't want to hear a thud. Like your right hand keeps pushing down. You want to hear like a whiplash. You must hear that Christmas of strike. Now all of that, you've got to see as a shimpan in a fraction of a second. You haven't got time to think about it. You have to absorb it over time and learn this stuff. And then, the requirements for a correct strike. The Shia Shah has to correct, have the correct posture. They have to show good spirit. This will be through their ki eye. They uh, must hit the correct target area with the correct part of the shin eye. And, this isn't in the regulation and should be, it must be with the correct angle of the blade. In other words, if you are striking a men, the string must be on the top. If you are striking a door, the blade must have been turned. If you strike the door like that, it is not a point. You have to observe all of these things. The Kamai, the Kath, the Zenshin, all happens in a second or two and you have to make an instant judgment taking all of these factors in, into account. Not so easy. But this is key. And of course, it comes from your personal experience of looking and listening. When you are looking, you are observing all the components, the requirements, the Kamai and the Zanshin, the, and you are listening because you want to hear what that Shunai is doing. Not just looking, you can actually hear when the Shunai makes a good cut. Sounds different. You heard just now when I demonstrated cutting the Men Gamay, it sounds very different from striking the Datotsu Vu. And you can also hear the different sound if a strike is being made and is counted and stopped by the opponent's shunai. These are all different sounds that you must become attuned to before you make your judgment. And all judgments obviously must be consistent with the rules and regulations.
Any questions on this so far? Because this to me is what you need to focus on now in your journey of being a Shimpai. Sorry, since it just made a comment quickly. Yeah. Um, but some people here do purely the IO, and I yes. invite them to come and watch, uh, to look at this presentation for that exact reason. Everything that you see there, whether you're doing Kendo or the IO, it's yeah. the same kind of mindset that you apply. Absolutely. So that is a very important um, that you're using a sword, not just a piece of stick or a bamboo. Remember, so here I, you've got an imaginary opponent in front of you. So everything here applies. I, as if your opponent was in front of you. So you have to make a correct cut in EI. In the same way, you have to show the correct body posture, you have to do the correct timing, you have to have the correct spirit through a silent kia, not a vocalized kia. All of those matters apply, whether you're doing kendo or EI. It's a sword fight. Sorry, Sensei? Yeah. Uh, just a question with regards to Zansha. Yes. Um, I saw a YouTube video where a guy celebrated the new... Cancel. Yeah. Point to cancel. And, that, and that's because he broke Zansha, not because he was celebrating or...? Because he was celebrating. You have celebrating. to have a certain level of... almost humbleness when you, sit, when you score the point. Basically what your feeling should be is to your opponent, thank you for allowing me to score the point. Not shame, I'm the greatest person ever and I, you go through, hey, point cancel. Immediately they'll go up and they'll cut the point immediately. Yeah. So there's no, you mustn't have the personal feeling of I'm better than you, which is what the celebration indicates. And then, so coming back to Zanshin, yeah. is, that, is that an indication that someone has lost their Zanshin or that they're not applying Zanshin? No, or also they've lost it because they think now they've won. Yeah. They haven't. They haven't. And, is and they're not sure. I mean, they've done the score and many of them, you're celebrating before you've even looked at the ship fund flags. And they might not have given you the point. And meanwhile, your opponent's coming after you and they are liable to score the point on you because now you've lost your focus and your concentration. Something, something that happens to me a lot during Keiko is um, if I find that I've been hit properly, yeah. um, I lose focus. I, I kind of focus on the fact that I've lost the point rather than maintaining Zanshin and going for it again. So it's, it's, Something in my personal space yeah. that I need to work on. No, but you're not maintaining sanction because yeah. you're maintaining a, a, a kama, a correct kama. Don't lose your kama. If somebody scores a point on you, your whole attitude should be, well, thank you for scoring that point. What can I learn from this? That's what your attitude should be. And at the same time, maintain an excellent kama. So if they've scored the point and they've gone through and the flags are up, you still turn around immediately as if they hadn't scored the point. Mm. You really to score your own point. Yeah. And at that point you'll step away. Because the judge has so said, yeah man. Okay. Alright. Right. So let's look at the progress of scoring a point, what you've got to look at. First of all, you've got to see if the Shiai Shah is demonstrating a a good spirit. And you can see when they are, you can always see when somebody is focused and they don't talk about it, but the correct place to be when you are doing your Shi'ai is to be in the moment of now. You should not be thinking about what you want to do. You should not be figuring it out, what should I, how should I attack my opponent, because you don't know what your opponent is going to do. So. The shimpan must see that this person has got the correct spirit, as it were, of being in the moment, observing, not thinking. The moment you, you can actually see when when uh, Shia Shah start thinking about what they're going to do, they actually lose their focus. Mm. Then their shana wanders off course, or their shoulders slump, or their posture goes wrong. You know now they're thinking about something instead of just being there in the moment, 
being at the ready, waiting, waiting, looking for the moment, testing, testing, testing. Ah, good spirit, good spirit. Boom. Okay. So that's the first thing you're looking out for. When the two opponents are at each other being trying to... What sort of pressure are they applying? And Sema you can observe through what are called the Sun Suffer, the three killing points. In other words, what you wanting what are you wanting to see as a shimpan is a shia shia killing their opponent's technique, killing their opponent's spirit, kia, and killing their opponent opponent's sword. Um, uh, uh, sword. Kill the sword. Kill the technique. Whatever the technique they're throwing at you, you are ready for it to counter and kill their spirit. These are the three points of good semi. And semi doesn't necessarily mean movement, physical movement. That's semi. But semi can just be a powerful spiritual feeling. You pressure them. Any way that you can pressure your opponent. So as Shippan, you've got to look to see if the Shia Shia is applying pressure. Then we come to Kiai. There are three words here and they all intermingle and uh, three words are Kiai, Hase and Kake Goe. Um, we only talk about ki'ai. You must have a good ki'ai. When you strike men, your ki'ai should be men. You should be showing your spirit by ah, good ki'ai. But that's in a sense wrong because you know you can have ki'ai when you do doing either. It's a silent ki'ai. Silent. But just showing your spirit. Ki'ai is showing spirit. Uh, Kakegoi is voicing. Kakegoi is when you're shouting men, kote, or whatever it is. That is, that is called kakegoi. And hase is the action of pronouncement, the action of the shout. So it's a bit confusing. And we lump it all together as kiai. But be aware that kiai is not just shouting. Kiai is a demonstration of spirit whether it is through a vocalization through kakagoi or whether it is a silent kiai. Just a demonstration that you are just imbued with spirit. Sensei? Yeah. Do you have to say men and hit the men? Yeah. If you say kote and Same. hit the men? No, simultaneous. That's what ki ken each means. So you have to, as you hit the men, you have to demonstrate that you knew what you were doing by saying and of course your body movement must be synchronous with that. That's the key can tie each. Your key eye, the shout, the sword strike, and the body movement must be as one synchronicity. And this is difficult for beginners to learn and it's something you must watch when you score. So if somebody if you're a shimpan and somebody goes, man, not a point. Not a point. And since if you block and you hit the crotte instead of the men? And then if you shout at men, it's not a point. Oh, okay. There's no chance hits in Canada. Okay. Um, since I, uh, I was asking more of the other based question, so if you are showing the eye uh, in the other, can you show through breath work? You show through? Breath work. Breath work or just? You know, in, in EI, basically it's then you do your attacks with one breath. Kendo, you do your attacks with one breath. Okay? Because the moment you are taking a breath is a weak point. You've left yourself on or more. So you want to be able to take your breath when you're out of harm's way. And I'm sure uh, one sense has done the exercise with you, but uh, one way of learning the good breath control is to take a good breath, 
you make a short key up. Yeah! And you see all my breath is still in here. So, yeah! Bam! But that's all one breath. That's why you have to learn to do Kiri Kayashi with one breath. Good breath control. And you're from here, not from the throat. So, and your breath is in. One breath. Not man, man, man. Man, it breaks everything. It breaks the rhythm, it breaks the concentration. So, if you can't do it in one breath, you try the forward in one breath, and then the back in one breath. Or do two cuts, one breath. Slowly build it up. So when you're doing your Kiri Kayash, don't just do Kiri Kayash by the numbers. Think about what you're doing. So, as Shimpan, you will see in your Shiai Sha, those people who have been doing correct Kiri Kayash will be attacking with good spirit, breath control, looking for opportunity, all of those things will appear over here. And finally, your yoga de tuts. And who knows about sen? Sen, sen. No sen and sen. They go no sen. Who knows about those things? <laughs> All right, the key to your kendo. This shows your timing and your opportunity. Any, you know, anybody know what sen means? Huh? In Japanese, the word sente means beforehand. So sen has a sense of beforeness. Something happens before something. So sen, sen is short for sen no sen. It's this should actually be sen no sen. And then you've got sen sen no sen and go no sen. So, sen no sen is that you want your beforeness to happen before your opponent's beforeness, if that makes sense to you. So that's when you have initiative sense, eh? It's, uh, it's when your opponent starts to attack you and you attack them first. So like the Dana Kote is a good example. They've started to go for the men and you take their contact. That is sen. That is sen no sen. Okay? Go no sen is typically when you've enticed your opponent to attack you. So you know what they're going to do. You've made pretended your men is vulnerable, they attack, and you will counter with a suriage or a harai, and you will then take the point. That's go no sen. So go no sen is waiting till the last moment and attacking. Sen sen no sen is mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> it's what eight stands do. <laughs> and they know before, you're before before. <laughs> In other words, they know what you're going to do before you're going to do it. And if you can develop a sen, sen, no sen in your kendo, you will be a very excellent kendo player. So when you're doing your attacks, be aware of whether, and if as a shimpan, if you see a strike with sen, sen, no sen, I mean it's a slam dunk, automatically your flag will go up. Sen, no sen, a little bit more difficult to... Uh, to judge as a shimpan because there's action going on on both sides. Go no sin is quite easy to judge. You know, sin no sin, no sin day kote is sometimes very difficult because to, he hit the men first or he hit the kote first. And you've got to be very, very focused in the side. <coughs> so it's important that you understand what those three sins are. And then, of course, Zenshin. Zenshin, do you still carry your spirit after the strike? Is your Kamai correct? So, you know, all of this thing of 
Bing in. That is no good. That is not as ancient. Because you've thrown your command right out. Zen, man, and you carry on your left hand should be where it stays. You go through, man, turn around, ready. That's sanction. And your key on must be as powerful right through. Man! Not man! There's your spirit just flowing out of you. So as a shimpan, you must recognize all of these things. And you must judge accordingly. Ah, any questions on that? So this little group, I think, for you at this stage is the most important for you. Ah, so I'm a newbie and kind yep. of a guide or a practitioner. Uh, I don't know if you've read the book of the Five Rings. Yes. Uh, Musashi talks about Sen, Sen no Sen and Tai no Sen. Is that a similar kind of a vibe? Tai no Sen is Sen no Sen. And it's, it's, it's all about timing. Is that, is that correct? Talking about? It's about timing. The timing of the attack. Well, this is all related to timing. Okay. This is all the sense of timing specific. And of course, your best kendo is when you choose the opportunity to attack with perfect timing, that's when you win the point. So timing is key. And timing is related to your three sense. Okay. Right, let's quickly look at matters related to Shi'an. So, basically this is the correct striking area, or the thrusting area, but it's not specifically defined. It's just judged that this is the best cutting area. Uh, you score a point here, yes, you can score a point here, if it's a good cut. So you don't have to be religious about it. And then you know the scoring points of the men there, there, and there. That's a 45 degree, 45 degree. It's something that you don't do enough of, by the way, in your Shia. You're always trying to get sure men. So you men is just as effective and scores you the point. And you should maybe practice that a bit. Door cut is to the side, not to the front. So, of course, the door cut requires very quick timing. Because <coughs> your opponent's coming to you, you're doing kaiji door, you have to get your distance right. So you're striking there, so you're doing that, striking in the front wrong. So as a shimpan, you have to make sure when somebody has done a door strike that it is on the correct part of the door. Very important. Okay, kote, yes exactly where it shows and this is not a cote and I've seen this scored many times as a cote it isn't and this is not a cote must be on the correct target area and of course ski ski must be on the ski diary okay so you as a shipman have to focus very clearly your vision make sure that the correct target is being struck. Right. Prohibition and penalties. As you can see, there are a whole bunch of them. And a whole bunch of penalties. Um, the main one is stepping out of the dojo area. Jokai. And again, as a shimpan, you have to judge this very carefully. Invariably, the person who steps out of the Shi'ai Joe gets a penalty, unsuko. However, if you push somebody out deliberately without the intention of making a valid point score, then you are penalized. So you have to make a judgment. Just a word of advice as a shimpan. If there's a wrestle going on on the edge of the Shi'ai job, instead of waiting for the penalty to happen, stop the Shi'ai, bring them back to the center, and let them carry on. So this is your, within your ambit. You can do that, and it's usually better to do that than 
and our penalties to start mounting up. So if you see they're hovering on the edge and there's a wrestle going on, which by the way is not allowed anymore, I'll talk about that. It's stop the Shi'i rather, bring them back to the center and start again. Yeah. So that's it. I mean, how much interference? I mean, maybe maybe the one Shia Shia is putting a lot of pressure, causing the one Shia Shia to go back. Have you seen Reggie walking back? Sure. Is it our response? Is the Shimpa response back to stop it all? No. To when they are stuck at the I edge. And there's no it. movement happening. Nothing is going on except you know the one's going to try and push the other out. Well, just stop it at that point and bring them back. And that's saving time because otherwise they're going to be standing there for another 30 seconds doing nothing. You'd rather bring them back and get the fight going. Right. Okay. Uh, just quickly, as Shimpa, you must, you, Shiosha, you're not allowed to put hands on your opponent. You're not allowed to hold the opponent in your arms, Cedric. <laughs> You're not allowed to grab the opponent's shinai. You're not allowed to hold your own shinai other than on the sakigawa, the hilt. You can't grab your opponent's shinai under your arm and hold it there while you try to do a one-handed cut. You mustn't put your shinai on the opponent's shoulder intentionally. <laughs> if you fall down and you just lay there on your face without doing anything, it's a penalty. Okay? Intentionally wasting time, you can be penalized for that. And doing unfair tsubazurai or sorry, jump forward a bit then. Tsubazurai or um, Whatever that's it, what did it say? Right. So, then a whole bunch. I'm not going to go into the penalties and that. And the main thing you've got to look out for, which will be stepping out the dojo, you've got to make a judgment, and that's when most of the penalties take place. Okay. Mr. Zinson, can you just, uh, for the people of here, uh, the old Japan Kendo Federation said Super Sarai is now yeah. not going to be step away quickly now yeah. because of the COVID. There's no Super Sarai. There's no more Super Sarai. Eh? You cannot do your normal Super Sarai with your opponent close up yeah. right now because of COVID. If you get close to your opponent, you have to separate immediately. And I haven't yet seen a pronouncement of whether it's penalized or not, but I would think you can penalize. Yeah. It has been seen, sir. They had a uh, Tokyo police competition and there were a lot of uh, Hansukus walking into the bus. And they both Hansuku, yeah. So just realize as soon as you get close to your opponents, move away. And anyway, that's good kendo because it means it gives you the correct mind, the correct distance for you to gather yourself and get ready for the next cut. Okay? So. Uh, now come two matters relating to ship time. And now you, you should read up on the penalties. You know, there's a whole issue about drug taking and invalid equipment and foul language and all of that stuff. You have to be aware of those things because there are penalties attached to all of them. Right, decisions on your good thoughts. So, a point is awarded when two of the three shimpan signal a valid point, or when one shimpan signal a valid point and the other shimpan abstain. Then they still won that point. Okay. If the Shiosha commits an improper act, the decision of Yokutatsu may be revoked. It's called Togekeshi, revocation. Even after the pronouncement, Senkoku, of the winning point. So exactly that, you just scored a men, the flags go up, and then you go off and celebrate. That will immediately, the institution will immediately revocate that point, Torikeshi. Okay? If the Shimpan have doubts about the decision, Shimpan shall call Gogi, 
and agree on a decision. We'll talk about that just now when we go through the flags. If one shimpan has signaled a yoku do tots, the other shimpans must immediately signal something. Either I don't agree it was a point, or I didn't see, or give a point in the other direction. Now, if you are fighting, you see a flag go up, you carry on fighting until you actually hear a pronouncement. Otherwise you'll stop, think you won the point, but you haven't, because you haven't seen the other flags, and then the other person scores on you. Then you wait for that yame, or benari, or kotayari, or whatever. Okay. Um, if your has been awarded, or shia has been suspended, shushin, uh, shall get shia to return to the center. Okay. So in other words, wherever the point is scored, at the end, everything comes back to the starting position. The competitors get onto the starting lines, the sim, and the shimpan take their original positions. And same with Hansuko, shimpan shall immediately spend shia and signal with the shimpan key, the flag. And if there's any doubt, then Gorgi is cool. Uh, Tubizurai doesn't exist anymore, uh, but if the Tubizurai is allowed and people, competitors are in Tubizurai and doing nothing, the stalemate, they're just standing there, then you move forward and you say Wakare, and they separate where they are, they don't come back to the starting position, separate where they are, and then you say Jume, and they start again. If they're right on the edge and in separation, one of them would be out of the Shia chain, you have to actually move them into the Shia chain before you start. <coughs> if the Shia Shah Sha asks the Shia to be stopped, if you see your own Shia is broken, uh, you can put up your hand and the Shushin will stop the Shia and ask you, why have you asked for suspension? And you better have a very good reason, because if you don't, you will get a penalty. But if you have a good reason, like something as your equipment become untied, or your string has become loose, or your shin on is the splinter over there, you can, as a competitor, put up your hand to stop the Shi'i, and they will suspend the Shi'i. But if you just spend the Shi'i because you're feeling a bit tired, <laughs> tough. <laughs> Yeah. If you see your opponent, yeah. the human has come undone or yeah. something like that, you can do the same. Absolutely. Yeah. Then I've got a second question. Yeah. When you're in uh, Tuba Sarai and it's a stalemate, yeah. how much give have you got to push your opponent back? I mean, you're not going to shoulder charge him or anything like that, but you kind of separate him. Yeah. Uh, your whole point of being in Tuba Sarai is looking for the opportunity to score a point. It's not a wrestling match. So don't think there's a wrestling match going on. Correct Super Zerai is very light. You're testing, testing, looking for the opportunity. Man, Nikki man, Nikki Kote, he know that that opportunity doesn't exist yet. Because there's no more Super Zerai. Yes, uh, if you're in Super Zerai, you can actually use your body. Not going to then carry on and get the score yourself. Okay. Yeah, but usually you would do that coming in. Tie, tie. Yeah. Boom, and bang! Push them and then chase them and hit. But not so easy to do from, you know, as soon as there are, you can use little tricky things like you can just shove them, shove them to the side. Makes a lot more sense. But, meaning this discussion now, because yeah. you can't do it. Um, in victory decided by Hantai, all Shimpan must signal the winner. So, the uh, already told you what Hantai is, is uh, points are equal, time constraint, you have to have a winner. 
you then call them to the center and the Shushin will shout Antaya and all three judges will then lift their flags in accordance with who they think has won the fight. And there will at least be two flags of the same color at that point in time and that will be the winner. So that's a winner by decision. I'm not going to go into injury and accident, it's a whole other thing. Don't worry about that right now. Okay, if Gogi is a Shimpan conference, if Gogi is required, what will happen is that the Shushin will say Yame, Gogi, we'll demonstrate the flags in a moment. At that stage, the two competitors will move back within the Shi'a Joe, or Sonkyo, or Seiza. <coughs> and as soon as they have moved back and settled, the three Shimpan will come to the center and they will discuss an issue which is in doubt. Because the one sensei might have called Dogi when somebody called Hansuko. He said, no, they didn't actually step out the dojo area. But the three Shimpan must come to a unanimous decision rapidly. There's not time for a long conference. If there's really a conflict, they are entitled then, the Shushin's entitled, to go to the Shimpan Cho, which is the main judge sitting outside and ask for their advice. Or the Shimpan Shun in the case of more than one Shiai Cho. So, Gogi is a quick conference where one of the Shimpan have a doubt about a score being done uh, validly or a regulation being broken or on Suku not being properly judged. And any of the Shimpan can call for the conference. And as soon as the conference is over, the Shimpan step back. <coughs> the Shia shall come back to the Sen starting line. And the Shunin will give his uh, pronouncement about the decision. It will either be a point, or it will be a revocation, or it will be a penalty, or it will just be, had you may just begin the fight again. Okay? Right, let's look at the flags now. going to do a little test on with flags just now, but when you hold a flag, all right, I've got my flag somewhere here. Okay, so I'm just going to first of all show you that this is the correct way for a flag, not quite, you should white shouldn't be shown here. Yeah? You should only be able to see the red. And when you hold the flag, you hold the flag with one finger, one finger like this, when you're moving around with the flag. When you unwind the flags, you do it like this. You do not do it like that. <laughs> okay? So when you wind the flags, you wind the white flag a little bit first, and then you wind them together. And that stage there's no white showing. And you hold the flag like that. Okay. When you have the flags in each hand, the Shimpan Shunin will always have the flag in the right hand. Okay. The, uh, the, the Shushin will have it in the right hand. The Fukushin will have it in their left hand. So in other words, all the flag, right flags on this side, right flags on that side. When you're holding the flags by your side, finger like that, and they point them directly down. No use holding them like that. It has to be like that. So that is the correct way to hold the flags at the side. <coughs> so, the 
top one is Hajime and Hante. That's where you will be standing. The bottom one is When you're scoring a point, if you're scoring a point, the flag goes from here to the straight arm. Your arm is 45 degrees and it's in line with your body, not in front, not at the back, and your finger is along. And it's immediate. Huh? Nanari! Koteari! So those are all the points scored there. You don't know what they all mean. Men score, kote score, draw score, ski score. Ipon Ali is when someone is pointed, awarded a point because their opponent had two penalty points, two unsuko. Neo me means, what does Neo me mean? Second point. Start the second point. And when the point has just been scored, you do not say Jume, you say Neil Could go for the second point. Sure. What does short mean? Deciding good. Short means decider. And short Ali means it has been decided, basically the end of the fight. Okay, and that will all be with flags like that. Gorgi. Both flags in the right hand, straight up like that. This is how you call for Gorgi conference. So if Fukushin says Bogi, Tushin will give the instruction. Bogi, flag down, wait for them to separate, come to the center. Okay. Torikeshi is a sign. Torikeshi is revocation. In other words, you scored the point, they said Menari, and you did something stupid, and then they go Torikeshi, and the fight continues. Sosai is when both uh, competitors suffer a penalty, and the score is one all, and they can't now both or they both had penalties before, and they both now score penalties simultaneously. What you're doing is you are calling a suko and then you sosai, you cancel out the penalties, you don't score any hard points. I score men, Ari, and you say, ah, I don't think it was a men. You immediately disagree. Okay. I score men, Ari, and you say, I didn't see. Which is a disgrace. You will probably never be invited to. <laughs> <laughs> About the only time that that is valid is if the opponent does a speed and you are standing directly behind them. You literally cannot see. But of course you should not have been standing directly behind them in the first place. So I advise you never to do that. What are you there for you to see it? The key one is when it's a draw. In other words, it's zero, zero, or one or at the end of the time. And 
a draw is accepted, it's like in a team fight, then it is red flag in front of the white flag, a little bit ahead of you. Okay. Yame, by the way, is straight up like that. Again, in line with your body. Not forward like that. Straight up. Not like that. Not like that. Straight up. Yame. Stop. Step down to the dojo. Show immediately the red step down. You show your flag. Yame. They come to the center. And then <coughs> if the um, if it's on the red side, you put this flag in the hand and you indicate Hansuku Ikai. So this is not pointing to the opponent, to the GI shot, it's to show that it's the first one. If they then Hansuko again, then you say Hansuku Nikai, and then you immediately say Ipon Ari, to give a point to the opponent, the other GI shot. There's two Hansukus making a point for the opponent. Right. Sorry, Sensei. Yeah. If that is now the second point for that competitor, then obviously they won the fight. Right. And it's happened on more than one occasion um, that in an international competition we've lost, we've lost the match because someone stepped out twice and they lost the point, lost the match. Right. So it's a very much a rookie mistake. We need to correct that. That's why it's a Shia show is a competitor, you have to be aware of the dojo, the Shia dojo dimensions and make sure you do not step out. It's, not really hot. it's very heartbreaking to use a match through penalties. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, Sensei, and for a goji to be announced, that uh, the officer is going to stop the fight first and then uh, ask for a conference or um, you mean. Okay, let's take this. Somebody has stepped out. Right. Looks like they've stepped out. One of the shimpan, whether it's the shushin or fukushin, will signal their flag. Right. Shushin goes, yummy! And immediately indicates what they might have stopped it. Right. They might have done this and immediately say, yummy! And go back to indicate it. Or if one of the fukushin have shown this, Shushin will go, yame and match. But the third one says, aha, something's wrong here. And the third judge will go, wogi. Oh, okay. And then the Shushin will call gogi and they'll separate. Three of them will now hold their flags like this, not roll up, come to the center. Come on, what's that? Uh, and Suka, he said, no, he definitely can step out. I think you guys have not seen it. I was very really close by. Okay, we'll cancel it. Step back. Thanks, like this. If they've agreed it's not, they'll just stand like this. Or if they agreed it was, they'll all three put their flags out like that. So let's say they've agreed it's not. The three will come back and they'll just say, hey, Jimmy, begin. Sensei, yeah. if, if the uh, Shushin really called uh, Isuku Ito, uh, he says basically Hansuku um, Ikai, right? Yeah. And then the Gogi is called. Does he have to do a Tunikeshi after Too late. Too late. Right. No, no. If you want to call a Gogi about, no, he didn't step out. You've got to do it before. Right. You've got to do it immediately. So that's Hansuku Ikai, Hansuku Ikai. It depends. The flags will go in. If it's on that side, the flags are here. If the penalty is that side, the flags are there. Okay, there's no wakare anymore. You've got to separate yourselves out. Yeah, so it's, if there is wakare, it's wakare, straight up like that. And as soon as they are separated, 
to be so good to the mark, you say, okay, and they start again. So just put into context, the cut is then when they in two of they get too stuck up to two they two long. In, they did not. They know nothing is happening. So There's no opportunity for scoring a point. Right. They're just wasting time. So without stopping the match, the Shinkan will say, Okari, and they'll immediately separate and carry on. You must have the correct flag, signs. So, the normal flag is 25 by 25, 10 centimeter thingy, and if I remember correctly, this is 5 centimeter diameter. That's the flag top. And then there's the uh, triangular red flag. Anybody know what that is for? Oh, you don't have one, but it's on no, the manager's no, side. It's, manager's it's with the manager. And if the manager, you may not argue with the decision of the shimpan. Once the shimpan has made the decision, that's it. But if the manager sees or thinks that there has been something that the shimpan have not picked up, which goes against the regulations as published, he can hold up his flag. It must be before the end of the fight, and then the complaint is handled. You go to the shimpan cho, and the manager will come, and the shushin will come, or they will all go, and the manager will voice his uh, complaint and a decision will be made, and then the shimpan will go back and the pronouncement will be made on that. It doesn't happen often. 